We'll make our effort and we won't give up. We'll go to the grave doing this work. We will not give up. And we know that we are reaching enough to justify us not giving up. Yes. So we won't give up. We need your help. All of you who are decent minded and want to have an intelligent human life, we need your help. We need you to do more than just live for yourself or for your family. No, we need you to live for human life. We need you to live for human life because human life on this planet is threatened. We need you to live for human life. And if you live for human life, you care about everybody. If you live for human life, you want to see everybody's life improve. And it requires more than just talk. It requires that you be an example. Keep your property up, like many of our people are doing now in these cities. I remember when I was a child, we had a bad reputation for letting our property go down, for not keeping our lawns up. But we have progressed a lot. There are some beautiful neighborhoods that you can go through on the south side of Chicago and some, and everywhere we live, you can find beautiful uh, homes, beautiful lawns, well taken care of. So we have made a lot of progress. But some of us are so selfish with that. So selfish. Little kid, walk on your grass. Get off my grass, you <laughs> baby kid. <laughs> I can't say what I came with, but I really know they say you know, what I heard. I can't say. It. I can't, but I won't today. <laughs> Don't be like that. That child. Perhaps living in a place that you wouldn't think of living in. Crowded, having a bad life. Even if you walked on your grass and caused some damage to your rose bush. If he was having fun and not doing it intentionally, it would be a good deed for you to go out there and say, come in, come, come in my yard anytime you want to. Woo! Say, would you like to have a glass of lemonade? Right. That's right. Right. Say, next time, next time, try to avoid knocking down the rose bush, because I have to put, replace that now. <laughs> but you are more important, you are more valuable yes, than right. that rose bush, so. See, if all of us do a little bit, we can beat this thing. Satan wants you to come from your ugly side. Satan wants you to say, you little nappy head nigga, you get out of my yard before I get something and shoot you, boy. Call the police on you, have you arrested. That's, Satan wants you to come out like that. Now, you want to really hurt Satan? come out as I advise you to come out. Then you'll really put a hurting on Satan. <laughs> Satan survives upon the miseries of human life. That's how he survives. If you get your life together, Satan ain't got no, no, nothing to feed on. He got nothing to do. Nothing to do. That's right. <laughs> But if you open your life to him to come in and ruin it and wreck it for, for benefits to him. Oh, what? Are you saying that Satan wants money? Yes! Because money is power. 
He wants money because money is power. There's an advertisement out right now, the advertising the movie, and uh, leave a lot, leave, they leave a lot for curiosities and not telling you much. It says six plus six plus point zero six. Yeah. On, a, on a black back, uh, background. Yeah. Like, on, like, it's, like it was written on a blackboard. I know you've seen it because they're so popular. Advertising the new movie coming out. Well, let me tell you where they're coming from. With six plus six plus point zero six. Now, really, they changed it a little bit to make it interesting, to make it look like arithmetic or math on a blackboard. You know? And they say, you've been warned. That's what the sign says. You've been warned. Now, I have shared this with you all many times. I'll, I'll be up too soon. Uh, be up in about 10 minutes. But uh, I want to share this with you again. When I knew that I was going to be a leader in religion, and be responsible for helping my father who passed away in February 1975. When I knew that, I said to myself, I have to learn the religion of the people that we have to talk to and preach to about, the, about Islam. I said, I should talk to them and not know what their life is all about. Not know the important ideas and principles that holds up the Christian life. So, I said to myself, I never had an interest in, an interest in reading the Bible. But I said to myself, I'm going to read the Bible because I, I should be acquainted with what they believe in. And not only that, my mother, she converted from church life to, to follow my father's teaching, Elijah Muhammad, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, founder or builder of the nation of Islam in America. So I said to myself, I went to my mother to learn what produced her? What produced her and made her such a beautiful mother? Oh, you say, oh, the nation of Islam. No, my mother was not a drunkard. She was not on drugs. She didn't use drugs. She didn't smoke. She didn't drink liquors. And she wore long dresses. She covered herself, her nakedness. She didn't display making it vulgar or any indecent display of herself before she became a follower of God. She was a decent church woman that believed strongly in God and prayed and sang uh, not a radio but her voice would wake us up in the morning. She'd be singing in the kitchen while working in the kitchen. She'd sing. Singing church songs of praise to God. And most of those songs she learned in the church. And she just would leave out certain names or add the name, uh, a certain name uh, to make the song acceptable to her. But she continued